So have you ever wanted to get into Kydex and you just really don't know how to get started? Well today I want to start a multi-part series where I'm going to take you step by step through everything that you're going to need to build things like wallets, mag carriers, holsters, sheaths, really whatever you want. There's no limits to what you can do with Kydex and today I'm going to take you through and show you exactly what you're going to need and also what's nice to have. And then we're going to jump right into the second part, which is going to be teaching you how to make a simple wallet. Stay tuned. Okay, so guys, we're in the shop, and I'm going to show you where everything takes place. This is an area that I call Kydex Corner. And the reason I do that isn't rocket science. It's quite simply just a tiny little corner of my shop that I designate to work on Kydex, leather, pinstriping, that kind of thing. The, the rest of our shop is dedicated to our business where we're making signs and banners and stickers and all that stuff. So really I've got to keep everything that I want to do tight, concealed in this little corner. Now the good thing for you is that you're going to realize that you don't need a lot of space in order to make Kydex stuff. That's not important. But I will go through some cons with you. And one of the cons is that it's quite messy. And as we go through, you're going to see that there's little fine black Kydex powder everywhere. And that stuff's just going to be there. So it's something that you need to consider when you're trying to find a spot that you want to work on Kydex. Something that's simple and easy to clean up, just like this. So in this tiny little space, I have everything from my press which is a simple press. There's tons of plans online, and if you email me, I'll send you uh, uh, plans on how I did this one. We'll get into more of that later. I've got my arbor press for setting rivets. I've got a drill press, a couple of heat sources. Most of you guys probably aren't gonna have a uh, heat press. So more than likely, and what I like to do Kydex with anyway, is just an oven that you can set a constant temperature on. Then we've got a scroll saw, and we've got a disc and belt sander over on this side. The main thing that you're going to need whenever you start making Kydex is a press. There are tons of plans online for various press styles. Uh, if you email me, I'll actually send you plans on how I made this. I simply used finished grade plywood and a couple 2x4s on the bottom to lift it up. Now, one of the critical pieces that is an absolute must is this thermal foam. And I'm going to put links in the description on where I got this. I got this from a place called knifekits.com. And the links that I have are actually going to give you the part numbers and the price at the time. And I'm actually going to list it on the video as well so that you have it. But just a simple press will do and a couple of clamps. Now there's various styles of clamps. These are bar clamps that I have. I find that they're really good for getting a lot of pressure on the piece. However, I would like to find some of the clamps that have the ratcheting mechanism to make it a little bit faster of a process. I just haven't found clamps as of yet that are strong enough to do what I do. So this is an Arbor Press that came from Harbor Freight. It's nothing fancy. I'm going to list the part number for you and the price at the time of filming. You use an Arbor Press in order to set your rivets in various projects. You don't need an Arbor Press. You can do this with a hammer. However, what I've found with using a hammer is that I've messed more rivets up than I actually got to be good. So. Um, I would highly recommend this because it gives you that even consistent pressure going downwards. Now you are going to need something, this is called a journeyman set, in order to set your rivets. It comes in two parts. This piece is the guide which will hold the die and the set. This is from knifekits.com and again I'm gonna list the part number for you and the price at the time of filming this is a drill press again from Harbor Freight you're gonna find a theme here where I tried to provide everything for you at as low cost as possible and to be honest with you Kydex um, 
isn't very hard to deal with. It's not a type of material that is going to uh, produce a lot of wear and tear on your equipment. So you can go with a less expensive product, such as a Harbor Freight, and this one has worked fine. Again, part number and price. Simple toaster oven. Now, what you're going to need, you can find this for about $20 anywhere. Uh, I think I picked this one up as, at Big Lots. But you're going to need a toaster oven that will have a mode that will allow it to stay on at all times. And it needs to go to at least 350 degrees. Most Kydex, the workability range in that is between 350 and 355 to give you your optimal um, uh, pressing, you know, where it's going to get a lot of the detail in the piece and, and that sort of thing. Some Kydex, for instance, I work with a carbon fiber look Kydex material and it actually requires less heat than some of the others um, but it has to get to at least 350 for most Kydexes. Here we have a scroll saw. You don't need a scroll saw. You would actually be able to use a saw, uh, a coping saw or whatever you had by hand or a Dremel tool comes in handy. However, this will save you a lot of time uh, when you're cutting out some of the shapes and things like that after you've molded the holster. So this is a massive time saver. You don't have to have it, but it does come in very handy. This is available from Harbor Freight as well. One of the final pieces that you're going to need is some way to sand your finished product. Now, of course, you could do that by hand. You could use a Dremel or you could use something like this, which is a belt disc sander. Now, uh, I've gone through a made probably hundreds of holsters at this point so this did save me a lot of time but you could get by without having this and save yourself a lot of money not even a lot of money I think you know again I'm gonna put the part number and just price and description in the comments it's not a lot and it will save you time in the long run if you plan on making a lot of projects so that's really it in terms of what you're going to need to get started making Kydex my suggestion to you would keep it simple at the very beginning so you have very little investment as you're learning what you're doing. But I would tell you to buy some extra Kydex material. You're going to mess up a lot of stuff and don't get frustrated when you're learning how to do something that's just, you know, it's what happens. But do not throw those messed up projects away. Those pieces of scrap are priceless and you're going to be able to use them to make smaller things. Uh, I've made some GoPro mounts and things like that. I'll, I'll also do some videos on that. And all made entirely out of scrap. Uh, you'll also be able to make some things like trigger guard holsters and stuff that uh, just require tiny little pieces. And I'll do videos about that stuff as well. Uh, so buy extra material. That's one. Keep in mind one of the downsides, two of the downsides with Kydex is, is the mess. You're going to have, if, if you decide to go with a sander like this or the one behind me, uh, you're going to have some, it's not sawdust, it's, it's plastic dust and that stuff goes everywhere and sticks to everything. So keep that in mind. Obviously if you're hand sanding or using a, a palm sander, it's going to be less, less so. Um, the other piece is when you're cooking it in the oven, it does make a really powerful smell uh, that lingers for quite a while. It almost smells like something burning. So uh, it's not toxic or anything like that. And uh, but So keep it out of the way. If you're, Again, if you're trying to do this in a spare bedroom or an apartment, you're going to have that smell. Don't freak out. It does uh, go away. It's not going to be harmful to you, but that is going to be there. Now with that all being said, let's move into the fun stuff. Let's go ahead and make a uh, Kydex Tactical Wallet. That's going to be video two. Then I'm going to take you further. We're going to be making some trigger guard holsters and some uh, regular, you know, outside the waistband holsters, inside the waistband holsters. And I'll give you more tips, tricks, and other people that you could watch on videos to learn more and more about the Kydex process. But to get started, we're going to make this wallet, which really has elements of everything that we're going to build off going forward. So stay tuned. Let's have fun. Let's get it done.